Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review, and um, another movie review, uh, reviewing on, in the memory of the late, uh, great Gene Wilder. All right, I first reviewed uh, one of his more memorable roles, Willy Walker at the Chocolate Factory. Now, the next one I, I was planning on reviewing, like I, uh, what I, was, I was planning on doing, next one is another cl another memorable classic comedy Probably one of the funniest com, probably on the list of one of the most funniest comedies ever. Film from Mel Brooks, Young Frankenstein. Who Mel Brooks I've always enjoyed as a as a funny director, you know, from making all these parody comedies, you know, from Blazing Saddles, which is another comedy classic. This film, my favorite, my my favorite film of his is Spaceballs. And uh, also another other ones like History of the World Part One, or uh, uh, Robin Hood, um, Men uh, Men in Tights. Mel Brooks has always been a been a classic comedy director. Or even what was always the other one um, with Leslie Nielsen, um, uh, Dracula. There was a Dracula. And something in loving it, I think it was. I forget what that was, but that was one with Leslie Nielsen as well. But my favorite is Spaceballs. This one is a very close second. And yeah, the funniest comedy of all time. It's one of the funniest though. It's not the funniest comedy of all time, but it is definitely one of the funniest though. I I would say that though. And sorry, sorry, it's the late Gene uh, Wilder, um, Peter Boyle, who is also no longer with us. Uh, Marty Feldman as Igor. Um, ter uh, was it ter uh, Terry Gar as Inga? Um, uh, Cloris Le Leachman as Foul Blucher. Uh, Madeline K uh, Khan, Madeline Khan as Elizabeth, who also I remember who played Mrs. White in Clue. And also uh, Kenneth Mars as um the ins as Inspector Kemp. And also. Gene uh, Gene Hackman as the blind guy, you see later on. So good cast. And the film was a critical and financial hit. Um, I think it has a 92% of Rotten Tomatoes, and I think has an 8.19 DB, I believe. And that's very high ratings for this for this film, and it deserves it. It's 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 always been a cl it's all the all these years it's always been a classic comedy, and it's made in you know parody of, of Frankenstein. Man, I liked it. In fact, it was filmed in black and white, and it was a very big hit, and it deserves. And I think it's going to be uh, recently. I think there are re-releases in uh, select theaters, which that would be that would be worth seeing. I would like to see this on the see this on the big screen. So, if I ever find it's playing anywhere near here, I would love to see this in the theaters. This would be worth money well s spent to seeing it on the big screen. I think. Um, it's been like about forty, yeah, forty, yeah, for preparing for this uh, for the fortieth anniversary because it's like it was released in nineteen seventy four, so forty years of twenty fourteen. Yeah, well, forty years is still a classic comedy. So, and all the whole cast did a phenomenal job. Gene Wilder, Peter Boyle as the Fra as the Frankenstein monster, Marty Feldman as Igor, Terry Gar, and among all the other cast members. So yeah, it opened yeah, but it opens up uh, at the Frankenstein mansion. Someone's getting into the old uh, Frankenstein coffin. The skeleton tries to grab the thing that it's holding, the box, and it cuts to uh, Frederick Frankens uh, Frankenstein. Or is he called? Is his name is uh, Frankenstein, teaching a medical class, and and one of the medical students says, "You know, excuse me, Doctor Frankenstein." That's Frankenstein. It was bunch of the, the great grands, uh, the the grandson of Victor, uh, Victor Frankenstein, who did all the things. And he's like, yes, yes, we all know what he did. And then he, one part is he uh, gets this uh, volunteer guy, you know, for like the nerves system, I guess, and you know, like it makes the guy stand on one foot and it was like a little bit slow on command, and but then he does a Gives like a quick reaction. And he's like, "You, uh, Philly, son of a bitch!" You know, always so tries to knee him in the groin. The guy's like, 
and then he does like this, put this thing on him to where, where he doesn't like make him react though, but he has that guy, but he has like, that, <laughs> your pants face on his face, like, hmm, he's just saying that you run son of a bitch again. And he says, we will collapse like a bunch of broccoli, and takes the thing and the guy is like, oh, and he tells what the guy says, he takes him, he's like, give him an extra, give him an extra dollar. <laughs> so... And then the the, the the one medical medical student um, is talking about once again about his uh, his grandfather and saying he's like my grandfather was a very sick man and he doesn't want to follow in his footsteps he wants to continue on science of life not death and as a, as a, he's, as he's keep on going on but but as a Frankenstein aren't you at least be curious about it it doesn't bring back uh, to life of one uh, that was once dead intrigue you he goes you are talking about the nonsense nonsensical ravings of a lunatic mind dead is dead but look what it have done to the with hearts and kidneys hearts and kidneys are tanker toys i'm talking about the central nervous system but your grandfather's work my grandfather's work was to do I'm not interested about death. All on the focus on the sensation of life, and he takes about this the scalpel. It's like you re re re, re animate the scalpel. He goes to goes and stabs himself in the leg and says, "Class is dismissed." So and the, the, this guy who had that box from the who, from the crypt, you know, and tells him that, about his great grand uh, about the, father about the will, and he has to go to Transylvania. And he's talking with his fiancée, Elizabeth, played by Madeline Kahn. And the other part where, you know, she's, like, breathing all this heavy smoke as the train is leaving. So he manages to, he manages to, to he reaches Transylvania. He's asking his way, pardon me, uh, there's a kid. Pardon me, boy, is this the uh, Transylvania station? Yes, yes, try the 39. Oh, can I give you a shine? Uh, no thanks. And as he's, and as he's on the platform, he hears footsteps and he hears, Dr. Frankenstein. And the yeah, Marty Feldman as Igor. Frankenstein. You're putting me on. No, it's pronounced Frankenstein. But is it pronounced Frederick? No, it's Frederick. I see. Here you must be Igor. No, it's pronounced Igor. But I said they were Igor. Well, they were wrong, weren't they? No, I didn't see who were wrong. <laughs> and then um, goes and pat somebody. He's like, boop, on his hump. He's like, Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean to embarrass you, but I'm an excellent surgeon. Perhaps I can help you with that hump. What hump? Let's go. <laughs> and then he goes like, do the walk this way with this little cane. And then he goes there. They're going to drive with this uh, hay cart. He tosses um his bag into here. Oof! What's that? Oh, that might be that 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 might, that might be Inga. And I was told that you can use a lab a laboratory assistant, and you have to play by Terry Carr. It's like, oh, hello. Would you like to have us a row in the hay? It's fun. Row, row, row in the hay. Uh, so as and as they're on their way, they see the castle. And then uh, Agor is it has these you know those huge things you tap on the doors. It's very big and makes a loud noise when it's banging. And and uh, Gene and Waller's like, what knockers? And Terry Gar's like, oh, thank you, Doctor, referring to her bosoms. <laughs> So, oh, it's like, oh, don't worry about it. And then you get introduced to, um, um, uh, Cloris, uh, Leachman as Foul Blucher. And when she introduces, introduces her name, every time, the running thing is, every time her name is said, the horses get all wild up. Like, I am Foul Blucher. <laughs> yeah. And, um. They do a couple more times, and then, um, and as Igor is about to go, and he goes and uh, looks at the horse on, on purpose, says, Bluga! And he goes and smiles. <laughs> and then, as it takes, we can take him up the stairs, and she's holding the candles that are not lit. And it takes him to, uh, Gene Wilder's, it takes him to her, his grandfather's room, he has a portrait. And, um, as he's, and as, he, as she's leaving, um, he's looking, and he looks in the mirror, and he, they like the expression on his face is like, and he's looking the, as the mirror is, as his follower is like, good night, darling, to the portrait. So later, later on the, uh, the night, um, he's like, as he's trying to sleep, he's like, no, 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 I am not a Frankenstein, I'm a Frankenstein. 
Don't give me that. I don't believe in fate. I will not say it. He's <laughs> probably referring to like to the to the to the portrait of his grandfather. He's like, all right, you win, you win. I'll say it. Destiny, no escape. <laughs> That's me. Oh uh, man, I miss Gene Wilder. Really do. And then Terry Guard comes in, and she says that she's hearing these um this music is coming behind the bookcase. And there's one where he thinks the he said he spot the trigger mechanism and he's like to see this white book he tries to pull out of it it'll like do something but it doesn't. And it goes to this other bookcase and you see pick up of course you get that classic scene, you know, like take out the candle, will you and he, the door the, 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 the bookcase rotates and he's behind it's like put the candle back. Alright, I think I figure it out now. Take out the candle and I'll block the bookcase with my body. He does, and he's, and he's like smushed against, like, now oh, listen to me very carefully. Don't put the candle back. With all your might, shove against the other side of the bookcase. So she, she goes and pushes on the other side, and she does the same thing. Puts the candle back. So it's a passageway, and then... And as they follow down, they, open, uh, they get through this other room where you see a bunch of skulls. And then they meet Hikor, who's like in front of him, and it's like, I, and I, it's like, I ain't got no body, and nobody cares, so, and I yuck it out. <laughs> this, it is, this film is so, has a lot of bunch of classic lines of dialogue, and it makes it so funny. You know, the, the cast, they do a wonderful job saying uh, the dialogue, just like with Mari Feldman, and then you get Gene Hackman. It's, just, it's all memorable, classic uh, lines. And as he reached at least the the lab laboratory where his grandfather made the monster, and they see the light from coming from the other other room, and as they find the room, this word the the mysterious person, which you know who it is, playing playing the violin with a cigar, and this is his um, grandfather's private library, and has the book, Mark saying how I did it, how I did it with the create the monster, as you know, uh, Gene Waller was like it. Could work, and as the thunder's going, you see the portrait of, of his grandfather smiling. So, and the, and they and um, they as they're, they're playing on to do and recreating another monster, and they uh, find one perfect body that one guy who's gonna be Peter Boyle hanged, and they rebury him up. As they bear, and he needs to take out the coffin, him and Igor. It's like, what a filthy job. It could be worse. How? It could be raining. And it starts to rain, and, and Igor's looking at him, smiling at him. So as they, um, as they get the, they get the, the body, um, they drop the crate, and there's a, there's a policeman there. Try to talk, uh, try to talk as, as they're going to leave. And as they do, um, Igor is supposed to get the the nice the good the good brain for the body, of course. And he's got like this um the sign on the door says you know, um after hours drop the brain to the slot, and he gets in there he gets the, the brain which is called H Delbrook, but he gets scared himself like how it was and um Frankenstein he scares himself drops the brain and he gets the abnormal brain, and then you see the Frankenstein played by Peter Boyle, and. And you see Igor doing the kites, and uh, he's like, you know, are you sure this is how they did it? Yes, yes. Now come on down. And he's like, there's a possibility of electrocution. Do you understand? He gets down there in a split second. He's like, I understand. Why are you shouting? And of course, you have the, the course they're recreating how he creates a monster with the lightning, and of course, with the classic with Gene Wilder, he's like, live, give my creation life. And as they bring it back down, nothing happens. And he's like explaining, he's like, no, 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 we must accept our failures with dignity and grace. And he's about to turn away, he goes in quickly, like, son of a bitch, bastard, I'll get you for this. Why are you doing to me? I don't want to live. I don't want to live. And Marty Feldman is like, looks at, looks at, uh, looks at the camera, is like, why dignity and grace? <laughs> and he gets a quick shot of the villagers, you know, because they know that. Frankenstein is doing his back and he's like he's 
probably because no matter no matter who he is, he's a Frankenstein and it runs in the blood and doing the same thing. And you have um, Inspector Kemp, played by Kenneth Mars, and Kenneth Mars, who's now also no longer with us, is that he's done a lot of voice work. He mostly mostly um he voiced uh, King Triton in The Little Mermaid as Ariel's father, and he also voiced um Littlefoot's uh, grandfather in the Land for Time series uh, as Grandpa Longneck. That's why I mostly remember him famous too. And he also had a voice in um, We're Back at Dinosaur Story as a Professor Screw, uh, Screw Eye. Yeah, he done, he's done a lot of voice work, but he's now, you know, he's now passed on from a few years ago. And he's uh, portraying um, the cop with uh, the wooden arm from, um, from the movie Son of Frankenstein with Basil Rathbone. And then it cuts to back where the rest of the gang is up eating dinner, and of course the the monster is alive, and they get down there, and they want to uh they wants to get um, release the strains off them. He wants them to walk, and when Mari found lights up light stress light up cigarette, and he sees the match on fire, he freaks out and just strangling Gene Wilder. And it's like quick, give him the, give him the. He's like, what is it? What you know? Three syllables sounds like, uh, uh, say or um, uh, give you know, and the part is like you give us send him, give him a sedative, <laughs> but it's sedative and Terry Guard gives him the sedative and and Gene was like sedative, <laughs> so and he's talking with uh, with Marty Feldman and Igor. I'm saying, um, uh, I might speak to you, um. Which brain did you give me? Wasn't it Hans Delbruck, right? No. Ah. Would you mind telling me whose brain did I put in? Uh, and you won't be mad? I will not be mad. Abby someone. Abby someone? Abby normal. Abby normal. I was certain that I was certain that, that was the that was the name. It's like <laughs> So you're telling me that I put an abnormal brain into a six foot, over six foot, or two, or, and I forget what the weight was, pound, and I start strangling Igor. He's like, Gorilla, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> and then, um, uh, Gene Wilder then talks with the inspector, Kenneth Mars, and they're playing darts. And the war war, um, when Gene Wallace not looking, the inspector takes all the darts and puts it on the bullseye, thinking, and makes the noise, thinking he threw all of them, and, and Gene was like, nice grouping. And the poor war, um, where inspectors purposely, like, seeing all these things, were making, um, Gene Wilder miss the board and couple out the window, and as, as the inspectors came back to his car, one dart is in the, one officer's head, and all on the tires. They're all flat. And uh, Foul Blooker is, uh, wants to release the monster. And, and when uh, Jim Moore's like, Foul Blooker! And then you hear the whole horses screaming again. And he wants to set it, and you know, it's like, are you crazy? He'll kill you. No, not this one. He's as gentle as a lamb. And it's like, ah! And then the um, Foul Blooker is uh, playing the violin and the music, and it's calming him down, and Gene Wilder knowing that it was her that played the music during that night, and he wants to fight so he can find all the things and make him do all this stuff. And he's like, and you and Victor, are, yes, say it, he was my boyfriend. And then the, the monster freaks out again, just uh, runs out into the night, and Gene Wilder is like, he's gone, we've got to find him before we kill someone. Oh, what have I done? Oh, Lord in heaven, what have I done? And where you get the parody scene, like from the how the original, where the monster was talking with, with, was with this little girl. Although in the original one, kills the little girl, but this one doesn't. Like when he sits on the teeter totter and sends the girl flying right into her bedroom, and when the parents think they're worried about it, they're like, "Oh, well, they're fine now." And then it's when you get um, the another classic scene with Peter Boyle with Gene Hackman, who's a blind little guy who lives all alone, like almost like in the middle of nowhere, and. And Gene Hackman is like, oh, forgive me, my child. You're really big. I didn't know. You, I didn't know you were a mute, a real big mute. And he wants to give him some. Of course, the one of the favorite, my favorite parts of the film when he's trying to give him soup. You know, right? And he's holding out his bowl. Peter Boyle's holding his, holding the bowl, and 
Gene Hackman's trying to, you know, put in the bowl, he's just talking, but it's he's pulling the hot soup into the um, monster's lap, and the monster's like, mm. <laughs> and does it, the same thing again. Why and how I'm smiling through all this because it's it's classic and it's funny. It's you know, it's how how the comedies back in the day were very funny. None of the comedies of today are not up to the up to par with the comedy like the like these films back in the day. Not even close. This is pure. This is this is pure genuine comedy and that always made me laugh. And especially growing up watching this movie along with Spaceballs. Among other classic comedies, has always made me laugh and chuckle and have a big, always given a big smile to my face as I am right now. Especially one of my favorite scenes with Gene Hackman. <laughs> so, um, and then when it wants to give pour him a, a drink and he wants a, a toast, right? And he's like, hold on, long friendship. And then he does this, breaks um, Peter Boyle's a cup. And Peter Boyle's like, and he wants to give him a, a cigar, and he lights his thumb on fire, and he freaks out, Mwah! and just goes and runs off, and he's like, Gene Hackman's like, wait, where are you going? I was going to make espresso. Uh, it was good to see Gene Hackman for that little for that little role that he had. It, he was just, he did a good job. So, and then um, he hears, the, the monster hears the music, the violin music, and it was with that Gene Wilder and the others, they said, trap for him, dropping a net on him. And then, um, um, uh, then, uh Gene Wilder was going to go and uh, talk to, um, talk to the, talk, uh, talk to the monster alone. And it's like, no matter what you hear, no matter how much I beg or scream or plea, do not open this door. So as he goes and hears a noise, right? And the monster wakes up and he's, he gets forgets, like, let me out. Let me out. Get me the hell out of here. What's the matter with people? Did you, did you, I was joking. Do you know why I joke when you hear one? Ha 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 Jesus Christ, get me out of here. Open this goddamn door. I'll kick your rotten heads in. Mommy! <laughs> and then, and, and then he's, he's like, to the monster, he's, 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 he turns back to it and he's like, hello, handsome. And the monster's like, And he's basically speaking very good. Uh, he's like talking real good to the monster, and and then the monster begins to like crying. And like <laughs> he's like, oh, and the mother's holding him. Oh, this is a nice boy. This is a good boy. This is mother's angel. <laughs> and and then he starts he starts talking like like how it's like I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna show you how to walk. How to speak speak, how to move, how to think. Together, you and I are going to make the greatest single contribution to science since the creation of fire. And then Inga is like, Dr. Frankenstein, are you alright? And then he screams out, my name is Frankenstein. And then you go to this, um, this uh, place where they have a stage, you know, whatever to, to perform. At first, the audience are afraid of the monster, but then Gene Wilder and the monster are doing a little song and dance until one of the, like, the lights explode and he freaks out and they're throwing stuff at him. And he um, hit, he says, uh, hits Gene Wilder, goes back, and then the monster jumps off the stage and starts attacking it, but all the officers, they hold him up and haul him off to like uh, a room, chained up. And then one thing he needs to know is that um, he gets a message while... Um, that his fiance Elizabeth is coming over, and bring him to the castle, and then uh, put back with a monster. Even when he's chained up, his officer, his prison, this prison guard, I would say, is gives him provoking the monster with a little with a little match, and throttles the guy and get breaks off his chains. And he's like, "What's the matter? Are you afraid of this little fire? This can't hurt you. See." <laughs> Oh, my mother was right. Little boys aren't supposed to play with fire. And just goes and and then breaks the chains. And he goes back to the um to the castle and get um um he get he 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 um he gets he gets back to the castle. Then he get it takes out Lisbeth. And of course with Elizabeth, you know, with the hair with the bride with the bride of Frankenstein look. 
Um, she she falls in love. You know, they both have a, a cigarette together, and then when uh, the um, Frankenstein hears the music, comes back to the castle. He climbs up the wall, and um, Gene Wilder prepares to you know do a transfer part of his brain to the monsters. And as the builders come in, they, they use Kenneth Wa uh, Ma Mars with his um, wooden arm as a, a battery ram. They break through the doors, they get into the lab, and the monster, you know, has like a now, is now, um, has much more calmer brain, as we said. Um, is saying, put that man down. He's like, is, he, is, that, the, is that the monster? It can't be. I said, put that man down, as they do. And the officer's like, who do you think you are ordering these people around? I am the monster. Oh, yes, yes, that you are. <laughs> first, like, in the spring, first, but with Peter Boyle actually speak in, he does a good, uh, does a good performance, you know, speaking calmly as the monster. He's saying, for as long as I remember, people have hated me. He looked at my face and my body, and they ran away in horror. In my loneliness, I decided... That if I could not inspire love, which is my deepest hope, I would instead cause fear. I live because this poor, half-crazed genius has given me life. He alone had enough image of me of something beautiful then, and decides to use him as a, his, his own body as a guinea pig to give me a calmer brain. And so, one of a sophisticated way of expressing myself. <laughs> and you see a foul looker, you know, like, over, look on her, she's like happy and stuff. And, and so, so, um, the, 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 the inspector is now, it's like, every, it's like everything, there, everyone's like, um, oh, it makes peace with a monster, shakes his hand, you know, it's like everything's all, everything's all right now. And as the inspector's like, come, we'll go to my place for a little vine and sponge cake. And then his heart pops off and goes like, Oh shit! To the lumber yard. <laughs> yeah, Kenneth, Kenneth Mars, may rest in peace. Not only he did good voice work as King Triton and as Grandpa Longneck, he did a good job uh, playing as the Inspector. And I liked to his reaction when his arm popped off. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> so, and then it ends you know with um, um, uh, Fra Frankenstein marries uh, Inga, and then. The, the, with the monster with uh, Elizabeth and he's like he's in bed you know reading the newspaper and um uh, Ma uh Madeline Kahn being like the bride of Frankenstein look and and, and Peter Boyes looks to the camera and he's like mmm and um as uh as uh, uh Gene Wilder and uh, Terry Gar get back and they're married and <laughs> they were gonna go to bed together it's like keeping his hat on and when he hears um Inga singing he has like, cause he has that now. It's like part of the part of the like the monster mind, right? And he's just the bed, and and he's like, oh, um, his way said when he got we got return, you know, for the transfer because what happened? He has like the monsters. Uh, what um, what uh, Terry Gar said earlier is like he would have an enormous schwanstuka. And when Gene Wallow said, that goes without saying. Woof. <laughs> yeah, and then it ends with um. Marty, uh, Marty Fillmore playing the horn. So yeah, this this film is is always will always be a, a classic comedy. I love this movie. I don't see like probably like, no problems with it. The whole cast does a fantastic job. Gene Wilder now may rest in peace. Fantastic job as as uh, Frankenstein or Frankenstein. Marty Fillmore as Igor. The whole cast: Peter Boyle as the monster, Terry Gar as Inga. Um, Gene Hackman for the, the small role he has, the blind man. Great job. One of my favorite scenes in the movie was with Gene Hackman. Uh, Madeline Kahn as as um, Elizabeth, good. Kenneth Mars as the Inspector Kemp, also a really good job. Uh, Clarice uh, Leachman as Fel Blucher, very also very um memorable as well. And the film did got it. It got a whole lot of praise. It got a. Lot, it was even nominated for a couple of Oscars, really enough, like for uh, screenplay and best sound, and two Golden Globe nominees for um, uh, Clarice Leachman as for supporting um, or for best actually for best actress, um, 
as Falb Looker and also for supporting actress um, Madeline Kahn as Elizabeth. Really enough. So yeah, the and, and it had a, and it won some Saturn awards as well and. And then the film, the film deserves to be like with the, with those nominations and, and wins because it's a classic and I enjoy this is one as absolutely one of my favorite comedies of all time. I had, if I would make a list of my um, I had to make a list of my top ten favorite comedies of all time. I would definitely put this on there because it's a classic and I always get a lot of laughs. It's a, fa a favorite of Mil it's a favorite of Mel Brooks of uh, definitely a, one of the best films with Mel Brooks. This film and Spaceballs to me. Um. And, you know, Gene Wilder, once again, may rest in peace. He will be, I, I miss, I miss him already. I have always, I miss him already. You know, from his favorite, from my favorite roles, you got Willy Wonka, you got this film, then the next one of, the last one I'll be doing for the memory of Gene Wilder is um, my favorite with him, collaborating with Richard Pryor, uh, See No Evil, Hear No Evil. That's going to be up next after this. Like I said, the three films of favorite of film, film, films of mine with Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka Talk Factory, this film, and Hear No See No Evil, Hear No Evil, which is like I said, my fair with him pairing up with G with Richard Pryor. But this film, classic, a monster riot from the New York Times. I would definitely agree with that. It's definitely a laughing riot. If it's but yeah, a laughing riot, I would say. Lines of the lines of the all the, the lines of dialogue made me smile, chuckle, and laugh. It's just it's most of everything in this film is memorable. It's always it always be a it always forever be a classic. I love this movie and it's definitely a classic for sure. So yeah, that's my review for young for the classic comedy film Young Frankenstein. It's definitely one of the best comedies of all time. And but I said Gene Wilder will be missed. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the last film I'll do for my tribute for uh, Gene Wilder and that is Hear No Evil, See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Later.